Good afternoon, everybody. It's great to be with you. If you could first just uh, join, join us in thanking Loretta and the Aurora Institute team for bringing all of us together to share and learn and be inspired by one another, especially our kids. Now, I've had the real honor and pleasure of meeting these four over the last couple of months, and it's just been great, and I can't wait for you to hear their stories. But one piece that have, that's come out a lot in uh, meeting them is just the amazing humans and young people that they are. So we'd love to introduce just a little bit about who they are before we start focusing on learning structures and paradigm shifts. Um, and we're gonna have you do this as well. So I'll kickstart. Um, and sharing a little bit, the goal is to share a little bit about yourself that is something that perhaps you would not find on your resume, um, on a traditional transcript. Um, so as an example, uh, I'm Virgil Hammonds. I'm that parent that will help my kid search for that candy bar that I ate. Now you can keep it light like that if you'd like, or you can, you can go for it and share a bit more about who you are as a person by sharing something like this. I was born Virgel Antonio Toribio Garcia Martinez. I came to this country when I was four. At that time, I recall my mom having the conversation with me that said, from this moment forward, you'll be Virgil Hammonds. And I still, as, as a 45-year-old father, I still think about how much of my Mexicanness I had to check and how much I lost and how I'm getting that back. Thank you. I turn it to Abby. What say you, Abby? Oh my gosh, I'm not going last. Oh my gosh, would you like to go? Yeah. Okay, let's do that. Who would like to, who would like to do an introduction? My bad, Abby. I'll go for it. London, go for it. Um, hi. Oh, my mic dropped. You can still hear me? Okay, um, my name is London Gray. I go to Paul Lawrence Dunbar in high school. Something about me, I am a strong believer in manifestation. I love earth and nature. And I think I'm a 24 hour uh, learner and teacher too and from all people. Um, if I had a superpower, it would be to speak to animals. I connect with lions and elephants. Um, elephants have a gentle giant type of feel, um, prosperity and wisdom. Lions, they have self-confidence, their assertiveness, and strength. Um, I wear a lion chain today because I'm amongst all of you, and um, it's a reminder to myself of the power I possess and the power that I carry and for my peers and my, my pride, which are my peers. Who's, who's feeling it? Who'd like to go next? Yeah, go next? Yeah. All right, I'll go next. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Hello, everybody. My name is Christopher Vargas Guevara. I am a sophomore at Bustonio Global High School. But let's give a little background for myself and my family. Both of my parents decided to migrate from a small little town in Michoacan, Mexico, called Cotija. Yes, exactly like the cheese. <laughs> and they got married and moved to Connecticut, where my mom was working in retail and my, do my dad was a, was a painter. In 2008, I was born in New Haven, Connecticut. <clears throat> my love for mechanics started at a very young age with trains and evolved later when I was introduced to Legos and automobiles. When I was six, we decided to pack and move from Connecticut to San Diego to be closer to family. And my love for automobiles grew once we moved to San Diego. My parents decided to take me to the train museum as well as the automotive museum, and I just fell in love way, way more. As I've gotten older, I've had the opportunity to learn more about the automotive world. I've been fortunate enough to have people around me who are knowledgeable enough and patient enough to teach me, like my uncle Jorge. He takes time out of his day to mentor me when he is working on cars. With this knowledge and the help of Hula Cruz, our World of Work coordinator, and Nara Winter, our school CEO, I was fortunate enough to land a mentorship at the city of El Cajon. This experience has given me an insight of what a potential job may or may not look like and it will look what to look forward for in the future. And my dream is to become an automotive engineer and with competency-based learning, I know that I can realize that dream. Hello everyone, 
I'm Andrea Gohardo. I'm a Phoenix. I'm a Phoenix Military Academy. I go to Phoenix Military Academy. My bad. Um, ever since I was a little kid, my favorite animal in the whole entire wild world were cows. They're cute. They're big. They're fluffy. But I think my favorite thing about cows is the way that they live. They live a very peaceful life. Unfortunately, not everyone has the opportunity to live a life like cows. Something that takes a major part of my identity is the fact that I care not, a, not only about my well-being and the positive impact that I have in the world, but the happiness and well-being of others. For example, the Uyghur Muslims in China that are getting sent to concentration camps due to their religion, the Ukrainians that are getting attacked by Russia, the Latino immigrants that are sleeping on the floor in big cities all across the United States, and the mass genocide that's happening to the Palestinians in Gaza as we speak. Why I care? Because as a student and as a singular person, there's not much that I can do by myself other than speak up and advocate for these people. It's important to educate not only yourself, but others on these issues because it's the people that are suffering, my bad, <laughs> that are suffering. You got it. You got this. <laughs> There's people that are suffering and we can't, take, we can't turn a blind eye to it. Perfect, perfect. <laughs> you got this. Well said, well said. Great. In a perfect world, like, people wouldn't suffer and these issues wouldn't exist and people would be able to make their own peace and live their life <laughs> like their own cow. Thank you. <laughs> Crushed it. Andrew, that was amazing. Now, Abby. Now, yeah, now me, now me. Can My you bad. hear me? That was on. Like, Am I loud enough? Can you hear me? Okay. Um, so hi, I'm Abby Lyons, and I was adopted from Seoul, South Korea when I was like really, really young. I think like eight months, 12 months, something like that. And um, my whole entire life, I just kind of tried to distance myself from my culture because I felt like I was fine with being like quote unquote whitewashed. And now as I'm growing, I want to connect more with my own culture. I feel a strong connection to turtle ducks from Avatar The Last Airbender because they, they hide in their shell a lot. And when they do come out, when they're comfortable in their environment, they can be really fun and bubbly. And right now, I feel comfortable in this environment, mainly because I have my friends over here who, like, they're just so supportive, and I'm really glad that they're here for me. Um, I'm a very introverted person, and I feel like with my schooling system, I have grown to be more confident in myself and have the ability to do speeches and panels and things like this. So. That makes me really happy. Um, but going back to how I grew up, I felt very like, I didn't feel like I was in the right place. All of my friends were white. All of my friends, they kind of just like discriminated against me. And I felt like I was in the Fire Nation because they assumed that everyone, a part of the Fire Nation, was just bad. But really, they were trying their best to be like everybody else and being happy. So I'm like, <laughs> I just wish everybody could have the like, ability to emphasize with each other. And I'm hoping that with this panel right now, we're going to be able to get to a lot of you and like have you think, hey, what can we do to make our schooling system better so that the kids can actually have a good time and feel safe in their environment? So, yeah, I'm like a turtle duck. Thank you. Right. <laughs>
Let's give it up for their radically human intros and really putting themselves out there. So, so thank you for giving them the time. And we're not going to give you all the time, but we're going to give you two minutes right now with someone you don't know. Challenge yourself to do a radically human intro. And here's the key part, though. Once we start talking, we start talking, right? So when you see all of us standing up, that's your cue to say, you know what? It's a pleasure meeting you. I can't wait to see you later and continue this conversation. Radi try your radically human intro. Ready, set, go. You guys remember every 20 seconds we go up? Is it? We're starting over there. Sure. We're starting over there. I think you just start over there. Huh? That you would be the first one to go up. Well, she's, I can't hear you. Hey, the, she would be the first one to stand up when. You stand up? Like, yeah, yeah from the time. Every 20 oh, seconds. Yeah. Oh, oh, me or you? Wait, no. You. Me? You. Go first? Okay. okay. How many seconds I got? 20. <laughs> I'm gonna stand up at 20. Virgil, do we got 25 minutes until the panel over? I'm missing your time. <sighs> <laughs> All right. Good in my pocket. Good in my pocket? Yeah. Okay. Okay, hey, give your partner next to you a high five. Say thank you very much. It was a pleasure meeting you. I'll see you down the road. Can't wait to continue the conversation. All right, let's get started. So we, we heard a bit from each of our learners You'll hear how, how they as humans actually come out as, as, as learners as well. And, and Chris, I'm going to start with you. And if, if you could tell, tell us a bit about your learning environment and specifically, like, how would you describe what a day in the life looks like um, at so, your school? So we have an 80-20 schedule, which means that 80% of the school that uh, we are in actually is in a physical classroom, and the 20% is in, like, off campus, like rich environments, like a mentorship or a virtual mentorship. So the 20% the, the 20 is on Tuesday and Thursdays, which we have these classes called X Factors where we can provide real world experience in, an act, in our classroom. Like, let's just say you wanna be a construction or carpenter, you can take a woodworking class. Or if you wanna go into fine arts, we have a theater class. And then our Monday, Wednesday, Fridays is our 80% where we have two project classes and two uh, crash labs where we focus on the competencies of our school and see how they, we can use them to tie to our interests. And in the morning and in the afternoon, we have an advisory class where <clears throat> we spend most, all of that time working on resumes, getting potential mentorships, and elevator pitches. So that can all help us even more with getting potential jobs in the future. Awesome, so the idea of, so I was a high school principal at one time and the idea of, of my kids being gone at least for 20% of the time, has a lot, I have a lot of questions about that and I wanna pick your brain on that later. So right. that's awesome, I love, I I'll love that. I'll take that challenge. And Andrea, you're, you're the first uh, person that I've met that attends a military school. Can you talk about like the day in the life? What's that look like? Um, so, it's not, our military school isn't very different from a regular high school. We just have different aspects that have to do directly with the military. For example, at 7.30 in the morning, we attend morning formation. It is a grade. So you basically stand in companies and there's different leaderships that you can be. There's stuff that we have to do 
during formation as S1. I'm a cadet captain, which is like my military rank. I do morning announcements. So if a sports team won their game or there's something that needs to be put out, it's always getting put out during morning formation. Also, attendance is getting, is, gets taken. Then overall, th throughout the day, there's seven classes, but there's like a five, six, which is the class that you have every day. And depending if you have lunch A or lunch B, that's like when, if you have like five, six before or after. So that's basically, that's, that's, a, that's a life of a Phoenix student. <laughs> I love it. So you talked, to, you talked about the structure, and um, I'm gonna kind of build on your response, if that's cool, and then um, London, I'm coming to you on the same question. So here at Aurora, we talk a lot about um, learner agency, about young people finding their voices, advocating for different learning experiences. Can you talk about, um, and Andrew, I'm coming to you first. So like, what, what does that look like? And when you, you talked about the structure of day, but how do, how do uh, like, can you talk about the learning experiences and how you can advocate for different structures? Um, we have certain clubs, such as the Student Voice Committee, uh, that they advocate for things, changes in the school. And as someone, we have something called staff, cadet staff. I'm on cadet staff, so we're mainly hands-on with issues in the school. So if you ever have a concern that you want to like, be brought up through the battalion, which is like the student body, just come up to staff and we'll, ha we'll, saw, we'll try to have, we're able to like, how do I explain it? Like connect with the authorities of the school and we kind of like, that's how basically you get your word out in our school. Just go through staff or in any leadership position actually. Just go up to your sergeant, kind of voice a concern that you have and you know, just advocate for that. So you're, you're that lead learner advocate for, for other kids that are yes. in the school and that connection to, to, to school leaders. Yes. Excellent. And London, you were, like I learned that you participated and helped lead kind of some design team structures and um, were really a strong voice for um, learners in your school. Can you talk more about that? Um, yes, um, I go to, again, Paul Lawrence Dunbar High School, the first African-American high school in um, America. And with the changes that Dunbar, they're trying to use Sankofa, which is looking back at the past to reimagine the future. And we, use, we try to use Afrofuturism, which is like art, the, uh, the um, futuristics and art and um, music and education and just black history to develop um, our students and our new generation more from the rich history that Dunbar holds. Um, my, my part that I play in Dunbar definitely, like you said, is student voice and getting almost all students on every grade level, on every grade level and um, their differences and to hear their voice and their opinions, what they want. Um, Dunbar is, they're, they're trying very hard to be proactive in the decisions and things they make from a lot of students. So like um, spirit week that we might have or festivities and act activities, we're definitely going to those um, specific group of people that the activity is based around. So like um, our Spanish teacher, Ms. Mitchell, she threw a um, quinceanera for the uh, Hispanic community in a um, gym last Friday and it was very active and um, it, they felt included into Dunbar and more um, input because that's what they want. We have, we have a lot of um, African-American students, but we also have a lot of Hispanic, Hispanic students in the building. We have sports activities from Spirit Week, you know, football and um, homecoming and everything like that. So we get what the sport people might want to get active and be more into the school. So, yeah. Love it, love it. Um, you know, Abby, you referenced in your introduction the idea of, of educators creating a safe space um, for learners, and and a big part of that is is having uh, learners find their voice and feel confident in sharing yeah. proudly who they are. Can you talk about that in respect to your learning community? Yeah. So there are a lot of kids who. Um, they don't feel as comfortable in their environment because either people or just the place in general. And one big thing with our school is that we try our best to make it so that the kids are comfortable. Uh, we have something called design briefs, which is basically a layout of, uh, 
a layout of the project that we are going to be doing. We have different roles such as like a team leader, a researcher, et cetera, et cetera. But there are also more flexible roles that you can do. Uh, if you have like a, dis like a learning disability, they make it so that you can still be included in the projects and you have a, a role that's more fit for you and not just like, oh, you have to calculate this and you have to do that and you have to make a map. Like, they actually make it so that you're able to flexibly, f like, yeah. get into it, mm -hmm. which flex, that goes into Flex Fridays. So we do all of the normal like school stuff. We have to learn math, science, et cetera, et cetera. But we also have something called Flex Fridays, which at the very end of the week on Fridays, you, so on Thursdays, there is something called Upsign that one of our amazing teachers made. And on Thursdays, we all go into this app and we sign up for classes that we want to take or sessions, which are going to replace the hours. There are sessions such as um, math help or get your stamp for science. <laughs> um, there's multiple things as well as fun sessions and just being able to be out in the community so I feel like it's very flexible so that everybody can feel included and you're able to be a part of group projects where you can all voice your own opinion so you don't feel like you are being kind of like left out. And I feel like that's a really big thing that schools need to start doing is letting the kids just be themselves and feel comfortable with having their own ideas and their own mindset. Radically human. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so I'm, I'm asking these guys questions. In, a, in about, uh, in a few minutes anyway, we're gonna give you the opportunity to ask some questions and you'll see the team floating around with mics. Um, so start to think about those, but as, um, as the crowd is thinking of what um, they wanna kinda engage you on, I'm curious, so like, can you speak to a learning experience that stands out for you in your learning community? Like, is there, is there something that kind of front of mind, you're like, this was the thing that I'll always remember um, and that I hope ha can occur for more kids? Anyone? Um, okay, so through my school, I was able to go to the Naval Academy, which is the number one Navy Academy in the, in the United States. It was a summer STEM program. I've always been, in, I've always been interested in STEM. In one of the sessions, we learned about, it's a long word, a long, yeah, paleotempestology and climatology, which is the study of hurricanes and climate. And that really inspired me to what I want to major in in the future, what I want to become. I now am decided I want to major in, 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 in environmental engineering and I want to become a meteorologist. So that learning experience, being in that studying, that really just inspired me to like decide what I want to do with my future. Yeah, presented opportunities. Yes. That's awesome. Anyone else? What, stand, what stands out for anyone else? London, looks like you have something. The, oh, I, okay. <laughs> I'm um, not putting you on the spot. <laughs> something that stands out to me like a non-traditional learning thing is one-on-one -on -one conversation with teachers, independent studies, and my environment. One-on-one -on -one conversation with teachers or adults really help have that emotional connection and that um, connection with students and people to understand where they're coming from, from both sides to understand a teacher and understand a student to help develop in the classroom or in the um, school um, community as well. Independent studies, um, it really helped me be more comfortable with trial and error, like um, failing and actually trying to fix my pro uh, thing or studying more to get the right answer because um, you know, my grade depend on it, and um, my environment. For like Dunbar, we have um, power hour, which is um, the first hour from nine to 10 o'clock in the morning, we have uh, activities we could go to from like study hall, college and career, um, like fashion design, we have something called Crimson TV, that's our mascot, Crimson TV, so students walk around with cameras and interview other students and teachers 
We have poetry, we have chess club, we have all different activity, uh, mindful, mindfulness and wellness, we have exercise and we have swimming, all those activities students could pick and choose in the morning to do before they go into their first period class. Not only is it, um, do it help for the student uh, and their interest, but it also helps for um, students to get to class on time and be ready for the day and not be interested or fatigued when they get in the school in the morning. Thanks for that. Yeah, appreciate it. Abby or Chris, and you want to share? Yeah, go for it. Um, it's kind of like t sort of two things, but it's like yeah, please. Um, I'm gonna like I'm gonna share like two project examples from freshman year. Uh, two of my freshman teachers are actually here. If you want to like wave, because you're awesome. Yeah. <laughs> but. So one of the projects we had, this is kind of going off on the difference between our school and uh, regular public schools, is that the projects that we do, they are appealing to a lot of different people. For example, we had to do a project on the periodic like table, and our teachers, they all grouped together, and they decided to have us make little movies based on the periodic table elements. So me and my friend Allison, we were a part of a movie that was like a spin-off of Honey, I Shrunk the Kids. And we turned into atoms, and basically like we had to fight other atoms so that we can get eight valence electrons and turn back to human size. I think that was pretty cool. I won Best Supporting Actor, because I'm just <laughs> 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 but. Uh, and another thing is our science teacher, Mr. Langle, he had us go to Heartside, which is a homeless shelter in Grand Rapids. And we had to create something that could help, help the homeless population on like a daily basis. So I personally made like these little teddy bears out of socks because I was thinking more of the standpoint of a lot of the homeless population, they didn't have a very good childhood and they didn't have access to these things such as stuffed animals, toys, and just like good, good hygiene and food in general. So I wanted to give them something that they could just like cuddle with and hold and just know that they're not alone. <laughs> um, yeah, I like scented it with uh, lavender so it could like help calm and just going to the homeless center and seeing these people just like light up when giving like given these products it just it makes you realize that there's more out there than just like money and like being able to get that shampoo you always wanted, or get that fancy perfume. Like, there's people who are actually struggling out there, and that's what I love about our school, is that we focus on making sure that we spread, ooh, that we spread this information, because a lot of it is overlooked. So strong examples of how um, you all, in your responses, represent as humans, as you're also learning and advocating for unique learning experiences. And Chris, I'm gonna put you on the spot a bit here, if you can integrate a couple of responses, because I want you to share kind of the non-traditional experience, but you know, we, we're here with a thousand people. Like, what would you tell educators? Like, if you had a call to action, what would you do? And I'm gonna come around to all, to all, all of you, but what so, would you say? My call to action is pretty simple. Like instead of just trying to teach a subject, rather take a moment to know, know, your, know your students because as I've seen around schools in my area, there's just way too many students in one classroom and that's a problem because when you know a student, they are comfortable with you and they, they will do their work in pride. They, they want to be in your class. So if you know a student, they will be happy and the happier the student, the more work and the better work they will get done. And they might even inspire even more students to complete their work or give 110% or more. And so I think that just stop giving so much about subjects and rather just give about the relationship between a teacher and a student. And not even just get rid of the teacher in general, just 
make them advisors where they can advise a student into anything like Narelle. Narelle is the CEO of the school, but he's just not a CEO. He, he is an advisor to me. He can advise me on anything. And Julio, Julio is not just the World of War coordinator. She is an advisor. She can help me with anything personal or academical. And I think that's the most important part. Love it. Great. Andrew, are you feeling, are you looking at me like you want to respond? What would, okay. what would be your call to action for you? Um, I think that a strong support system, kind of based, kind of like reflecting off what Chris said, a strong support system for your students, it just shows that like, I really have someone that's there for me, that someone that cares for me. You know, students, they, they go through things out of school, so making sure that you care for their future and their success which also leads to the variety of, like, how do I explain this? Like, making, kind of like, showing how, what you're learning in this class is gonna do them for the future. Like, for me, as a senior, I was really confused on what I wanna do for my future. And, you know, with Common App going on, it's, it's, it's crazy. So, just like showing, kind of like, how you, giving like inspiration on what they might be interested. Cause like some of my friends don't even know and what they're about to do and they're about to graduate. So just overall su strong su support system with your work, if they're struggling in your class and just inspiring them to do right for the future. Love Thank it. you. Thank you. <laughs> London, I saw you inch at the end of your seat there. You oh, Abby could go next. <laughs> oh, okay. she, she called you out. You ready for that? Yeah. All right, do it. Okay. Um, it's kind of going off of what all of them are saying. Just being connected to students' needs and being available for like personal or educational purposes. I know that my teachers and a lot of the other teachers I know, they have been there for me and for my friends, they'll just ask, are you okay? And I feel like that's a really big thing is that you need to know what your students need. Just not just making sure that they're being educated because that like, like being educated, that's a really important thing, but also helping them figure out their own lives. Like it's kind of like psychology, just be more, into psychology and like asking and emphasizing. Um, this, will, this will show the students that you are trying and this will make them wanna try harder and help them gain lifelong skills instead of just saying, like I know I've said this, I would say like, when am I going to like use this? Like why am I measuring this? And why am I trying to figure out the weight of an apple? I'm just gonna buy the apple. So, like, I, I know how it is. Um, just to help them love themselves, I feel like that's a really important thing because not a lot of kids or adults love themselves. And I feel like we... <laughs> I feel like we really need to try to get that to happen. And for you teachers, educators, to want to teach because you want to be connected to your students. Not just because it's a job, but because you want to have that connection. So yeah, I think, I think we should all just try to be nice. So yeah. <laughs> well said, thank you. Um, this was the question I've been waiting for all day. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I hope everybody is listening and hearing me right now. I'm gonna read exactly what I said on my index card. Um, my call to action will be, I would like educators to know teaching and learning never stops. Um, having an impact on someone's life never stops, whether you know it or not. Um, the development of children and young adults in this generation depends on you. Um, you have to actually love the job you're doing it, or you just don't do it at all. Um, we don't need part-time teachers anymore. We need full-time plus more teachers that's going to go above and beyond all the time, no matter what. Um, it's not your job to just be an educator for eight hours. It's your lifetime, lifestyle to spread the knowledge you have. Yes, there's going to be tons of obstacles that come your way, but you decide whether it defeats you or, you're, or you defeat it and surpass it. 
Um, I just like when educators say, that's not in my job description, or I got my degree, you need yours. Um, that's not encouraging to students whatsoever. Instead of saying those things, make some type of stance to help kids follow in your footsteps. All the extra stuff that's, um, that you believe you're doing is still in your contract. It's just written in invisible ink. Um, <laughs> er we all have a story to tell, and everyone's story will be told eventually. No, it's up to you to decide whether you're going to be the superhero in somebody's story or the supervillain in somebody's story. Thank you. Well said, all four of you are amazing and incredible. And, you know, I was thinking about um, maybe have time for one question, but there was but we have another day together to ask them a number of questions. So please, I encourage you to do that. But there was one piece in reflection and, and just getting to know you all. At Aurora, we talk a lot about personalized and competency-based learning, but you all putting yourselves out there today in front of a thousand people is a, really taking us from personalization to the humanization of education. And when we do that really well, as all of you said in, in the call to action for us, is that we really start to put justice forward. So really appreciate you. If we can give them one more round of applause for being incredible. That's for you. You deserve it for sure. And so thanks for representing so many people across the country and young people. Your voices matter greatly to us. So we want to put it out there for some questions. Um, the team is floating around. You'll see a mic float somewhere. Is there anyone? Back there. Okay, London calling us out. Go ahead. Who, I can't, we can't see too far. We see your hand. Yeah, we see you. We see you. <laughs> Mike's coming. Is there a mic in the back there? I think there's one coming right now. Oh yeah, there she is. We don't have any questions yet. There was someone in the back raising their hand in the back corner, but we can't see too far. So if there's someone towards the back, left. I was raising my hand that I have the mic in my hand. Oh. oh. That has a question. Mics are over here. <laughs> I have a question in the front left. Thank you. Hey guys, uh, my name is Zach, and uh, thank you guys for being here. Uh, my question is: at the center of all this work, it's all about you guys. That's why I'm here. That's why a lot of our, us are here. So I want you guys to think reflectively over like the past two to four years. What have you learned about yourself in this process? Um, I'll answer first. Um, like, I, I've been repetitive this whole um, panel that my voice, I learned that my voice has power and it is actually useful to not only myself but to my peers and to my community. Um, um, in the past two years, I know I've been heard and seen more than I ever felt in my whole 17 years of living. So um, in the past four years, I think my voice and my um, dedication and, and, and passion is what I learned most about myself in the um, past four years. I'll go. So I feel like one of the things I realized during these few years I've been doing this is that I've looked back onto the a high school that I originally wanted to, which is Grossmont, and I realized I'm, I was gonna go to the, in the school with thousands and thousands of kids or I, my voice was most likely never gonna get heard, and my interests were just gonna be just be like, okay, you're interested in this, go to this class. With Bostonia, Norel, and Julia are able to advise me and basic, essentially help me, guide me through my pathway to uh, gainful employment, as we call it. And <laughs> we, and I've learned so much about me, like. I started out as liking trains, and now I like to work really hands-on with automobiles from like swapping engines and all of that. And I even got a mentorship, which improved my skills even more to set me out for the future. 
and I never knew that I could do that. Yeah. And, oh, one more thing. To add on top of um, what I learned in, like, the past four years about myself, that um, I'm not, I am, I am not a product of my environment. My environment is a product of me. And to, to say that, like, um, I transferred to Dunbar last year, my 11th grade year, and um, since then, it's been a complete flip and switch in my whole, in my whole life since then. And it changed positively t because I changed positively towards my environment. So when I say that, when you make change within yourself or make change in, within what's your circle and what's around you, your box and your square, it expands more. Like it just grow more because it's growing to what you what you are rep, what you are presenting and uh, showing up as instead of what you're doing. And you know, that's it. I don't think that's it. <laughs> There's so much in that. Um, something that I've learned about myself, back, like kind of like reflecting on what I said in my radical intro, is the fact that I care. You know, when I was like younger, I was just in my own bubble. I was very, not introverted, but just, I just didn't care about anything. I just wanted to live. But now as a high schooler, I think that it's important to be aware of what's going around, not in only my community, but in the world and that my voice does matter, like she was saying, and that I can do things. I can do things, I can, I can advocate, and that does still make a difference, kind of like little by little, it does make a difference. So not only should I advocate, so should you guys. So thank you. Absolutely. Well said. Do you want to respond, Ed? I'm sure. Um, I know that like in the past, I was a big like people pleaser and I always felt the need to do everything for other people. But ever since like joining the high school, I feel like I'm starting to gain more of the ability to actually do things for myself and to care more about myself and not as much of, hey, what does this person want from me? Or like editing people's essays like, I'm tired of doing that, so <laughs> I'll have Miss Postma do that instead. <laughs> and I feel like I'm really glad that I met the people that I have met because at my old school, I would have gone to like Catholic Central or what, like West Catholic, and that would not have been good for me. So I'm really glad that I have the friends that I have now because they aren't afraid to just like point out like something that I'm doing. And I know that like everybody has flaws and I just feel like I'm able to recognize them more and know that like not everything's going to be perfect. So yeah. So very well said, and a piece that I, I, as I'm hearing you all respond to, to his question, I'm thinking, you know, our, our world is in a better place with young people like you in it, and, our, and, our, and as leaders of our communities and our world, but I'm also thinking of the people that help shape and frame and, and support you in your understanding of yourselves and, and who you are as, as learners, but more importantly, who you are as, as humans. Um, so if you are here representing one of their learning communities, could you please stand and could we all just kind of give some recognition and props to the folks that help stand shape up, these mom. young folks? All of you. You too, mom. Stand up. Come on. Do, we have do, parents, do faculty. I, I, we hope you heard it and, and speaking to all of them, a, a piece that we also wanted to emphasize is the idea like these these young folks found their voices, their opportunities, um, have, have kind of thought about future possibilities because of people like you. And there are countless other young people at home in our communities that are also striving to find themselves much as these four have done as well. So thank you for putting yourself out there. Thank you for sharing your radical humanness with, uh, with your new friends. Um, and with your learning communities, but more importantly, thank you all for sharing your pearls of wisdom and for being who you are. Really proud to know you and get to know you. You're welcome. <laughs> Give them a round of applause. You're welcome. <laughs>